from geometry, and then all the other complicated identities that uh, we're going to look at afterwards are all based on the sum and difference identities. <clears throat> we're actually going to only prove the difference, and we're only going to do it for cosine. Uh, and then from there, I'll show you how you get the sum formula for cosine. Uh, we're going to skip doing uh, uh, the similar uh, proof for sine, because uh, this will take long enough. So what we're going to do is start with two unit circles. There we go. And line up our axes. So they're supposed to be exactly the same size, and they're pretty close. So on the first unit circle, uh, now I'm going to put these points down in quadrant one. This technically doesn't matter what quadrant you're in, uh, but there is a uh, one problem. Uh, you can make assumptions when you draw pictures. Uh, so even though these are supposed to represent any angle, I have drawn them in uh, quadrant one. Not only did I draw them in quadrant one, I also, uh, I'm also gonna label A as the smaller one and B as the bigger one. Is that right? No, we'll go A is the big one. A does not need to be bigger than B. So there's A, there's B. Actually, I'm going to shrink the label for A a little bit. Oh, geez. There we go. We're going to redraw the exact same uh, angles, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate them. I'm going to rotate. I'm really interested in this angle right here. So what I'm going to do is rotate that. So that it's lined up perfectly on the X axis. So it'll look something like that right there. And now there's really only one angle we need to measure here and it is this angle. So what is that angle? If we uh, look back at the original, well, if we go all the way, we'll have A. So I wanna know the angle of this green angle right here. And I'll go ahead and label it in green. So if you go A, and then what you need to do is take away B. So it is A take away or A minus B. That's that angle right there. Now we're going to look at the points. So the only thing I know is this is a unit circle. So the x coordinate cos, the y coordinate sine, whatever that angle b is, and the same thing up here. This is cos a sine a. All right, so those are our two points there over here on our rotated angle. One of these points is super easy. We're on the unit circle, so one zero. The other point, relatively easy. Same thing as before, it goes cosine and then sine. The only thing we have to be careful about, this angle. Now, if I don't use parentheses, and just write it like this, it looks like cosine A and then after you're done with cosine A, subtract B. So I wanna make sure we do that first. So of course, what are operations? We use parentheses. All right, so it's cos A minus B, and Y coordinate, similar except sine A minus B. If you're gonna nest parentheses, you can make the outer ones a little bigger or bolder. If you got lots of colors, you can use different colors, but that can get tedious too. All right, so what is in common here that I want to focus on? This blue is supposed to be the exact same length. It doesn't look like it's the same length, but these triangles right here, the Seahawks triangles are both uh, the same triangle. This just rotated a little bit. So you're gonna have the two sides are both length one, 
This is length one, length one. Don't really need to label those one and one. We're not gonna use that property here. Uh, because they're the same triangle, uh, that means the blue line segments are the same. So length formula or distance formula Now, distance is between two points, so I'm gonna go uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is a distance function, so I'm using the letter D for distance. And this is the square root. This comes from Pythagorean theorem which maybe I should explain too. You know what, I will just uh, put a link to the distance formula in another uh, lecture I did. And I'll do that in the description. And you can see where that comes from. All right, so this is our distance right here. And so the two distances are the same. So I'm gonna go with the left uh, we'll go, let's do it alphabetically. So I'll call this uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. That'll be for one, uh, one side. And then this one I'll go, uh, let's see, so one, y1, x2, y2. All right. So on the left side, I'm gonna zoom out here. Hopefully I can write this small distance between cos A, sin A, cos B, sin B. This is the <clears throat> distance on the left line segment there, equals distance now we're on the right line segment, so I'm gonna use all this, oh, nice oval, all that information. So we got uh, distance uh, x1 cos a minus b, sine a minus b, comma, one zero. Ah, square roots are not terribly uh, fun. So what we're gonna do is go ahead, let's square both sides and we won't have a square root. Uh, we can square both sides in a, in a future step. We don't have to do it at this moment. So now I'm going to use the distance formula right here. There's going to be some big square roots. Uh, let's see. X2. So this X2 right there goes B. Cos B minus cos A. squared plus, now the y coordinate subtracted sine b minus sine a squared equals another square root, cos, uh, let's see, we'll do one minus cos a minus b, oh, I think the turning to shape messed that one up. We'll fix that in a second. Uh, so y coordinates is zero minus uh, cos a minus b. Nope, sine a minus b. So that and turn that setting off. All right. Uh, so I don't really want the square root. So if the square roots are equal, uh, they'll be the uh, same thing if I square both sides. So keeping with my notation before I'm squaring both sides of the equation, uh, not just the right side. So square both sides. That just means you cancel out the square roots. And the next thing we're gonna be doing is foiling.
The only simplification I'm going to do aside from canceling that square root right here is zero minus, so that zero doesn't, doesn't need to be written, and negative sine of this thing squared is going to be just regular sine squared because that negative made it inside that square. So it's going to get squared to a positive. Uh, let's see. It needs to be sine squared. I'm going to save a parentheses and write my sine squared like that. All right, now I have a lot of foiling to do. And make sure what I'm underlining is a single unit, so it's not going to be spread, uh, distributed apart. So let's go for foil left to right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to write smaller so I can hopefully fit this on here. So that'll be cos squared b uh, minus, now we're going to get an inside outside term and they're going to be the same. That's our first foiling. Our second foiling is going to look almost the exact same. So we're going to get sine b times sine b, sine squared b. Now we're going to go, uh, we get inside, outside. So we're going to multiply those two. We'll get two of those. So it's minus two sine a sine b. Minus two sine a sine b plus sine squared a equals so this is going to foil exactly the same way one squared is one i'll just go ahead and write one squared our inside outside terms again are the same so it's minus cos a minus b but it's minus two of them and plus cos squared So when I write cos squared a minus b, remember that really means cos a minus b squared. So that's just that exponential notation that's a little bit strange. And then last up, we're just gonna copy this guy right here. All right, good stuff. We hopefully can make this look nicer Hmm, that's two. Well, we'll go left to right, although well, I'm gonna do this one first. No, we'll do that at the end. All right, cos squared A, cos squared B, sine squared B, sine squared A. Let's start pairing these guys up. All right, sine squared A. So this is gonna cancel to a one with cos squared a so that those both turn into one uh, there's another pair that and sine squared cos squared those turn into another one and the other two terms are not the same so we can't really do anything with them all right so the two blues are one the two Magentas are one, so that's one plus one. Minus two cos. Minus two equals. Now, we're going to do the same thing on this side, except things are a little bit more complicated, but not bad. Look at these right here. Sine squared plus cos squared, it's the same angle. So they're gonna also cancel out to be a one. So we got one already copying that one, plus one minus two cos a minus b. All right, things are getting a bit better. One plus one is two.
So what do you do when everything has a coefficient of two? Multiply by one half, or you could factor the two out and then multiply by a half. Either way, you're gonna end up with divided by two or multiply by a half. And so that'll give us, oh, you can subtract two on each side as well. Uh, let's just do one thing at a time. I'm gonna switch back to a bigger marker. And we'll zoom out a tiny bit. We're almost there. We're gonna can subtract one off each side. So that one cancels that one, unless multiply by negative one at the same time. Everything here is negative, why don't we make it all positive? Uh, that two should not be there. There we go. That's the difference formula for cosine right there. Uh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna swap the two sides here when we write the uh, final version down, but this is uh, the first, I believe it's the first identity on your cheat sheet or your formula page uh, that we ran across in the class. Uh, so there's plenty more complicated ones and all the uh, tricky ones for this chapter will all be on your formula page. So you won't be required to memorize these. You will be required to know they exist and to be able to use them uh, by reading right off your formula page. All right, how do we turn this into um, A plus B? So let me just write the version of this down. So again, you don't need to memorize these uh, in this chapter uh, for my exams, because I will give you that formula page. And I recommend use that formula page uh, whenever you're doing your homeworks um, or doing any other type of trig um, exercises, because it's very useful and those are really tricky to remember. All right, if I wanna go, it's gonna switch the letters up here. Well, I don't know how to split up cos uh, x plus y. So what I'm gonna do instead, if it's x minus y, I'd be in business, but unfortunately that wouldn't be equal. But if I subtract a negative y, now it's gonna be okay. Uh, I know how to take cosine of one angle minus another angle, it's right above. So this is cos. So I'm copying right off the right side here. So we have cos, I don't need this parenthesis, cos x, cos, now to be careful, the second angle is not y, the second angle is minus y. Now even odd properties of cosine and sine Cosine's even, so cosine doesn't care about that negative. Sine, however, is odd, so this negative, you can bring it outside the sine function, making it negative, but the real effect is over here, it makes it positive. So we got sine x, sine y. And now all I'm gonna do is switch back to A's and B's. Problem. 
There's a negative sign. Check, checking my notes to make sure I'm doing this correctly. All right, I can fix what the problem is here. When you subtract, there should be a plus, and this guy should be a minus. So there's a sign error somewhere. Let's go up and fix it. I'll fix it with a blue pen. Oh, thank goodness. All right, it was right at the end. So I said I'd made everything, everything was negative, so I said make it all positive. I said that and didn't do that. So that should be a plus right there. Changes that, that first one to a plus. Changes this to a plus, which changes this guy to a minus sign. There we go. Now that minus sign, no problem. All right, so these are on going to be on your formula page, so you don't need to memorize them. All right, let's go ahead and do some problems with these. So the first one, first example, we're going to get the exact value. Now when I write exact, uh, if you type it into uh, certain fancy calculators, you can get a decimal approximation. It may give you eight digits, 10 digits of accuracy. You can use some devices will give you more. Uh, but no matter how fancy your device is, it's only gonna get so accurate, even if you go out to 100 or 1,000 decimal places. Uh, so exact answer doesn't refer to how precise it is. It is the actual exact, uh, the exact value. So that's what we're after here. So we're not trying to approximate with the calculator. And we're looking for cosine 75 degrees. All right, so how in the world does the sum formula or difference formula help us with this? Well, let's look at the angles we know about. We don't use degrees too often. So I'll we'll write the common angles in degrees. There is zero degrees, but that's not going to be uh, helpful for what we're about to do. So I want to know, are there two angles in here that either add or subtract to give 75? Uh, and if I kept going, the next one would be 120, 145. So the two that caught my eye were add these two together, you get 75. Ah, we're going to add two angles together. We're going to use this right here. So let's separate that work out. So I just saw 75 is 30 plus 45. Now I could write 70 as 70 plus 5, but the problem is 70 and 5. I don't know the cosine sine values of those angles. I do know the cosine sine values of 30 and 45. Now we're going to actually use that formula right there. So this is cos 30 degrees. I need the parentheses cos 30 degrees times cos 45. Now is a good time to use some parentheses where I am multiplying, and this would be minus sine 30, sine 45. So from here, uh, you just need to know the values. So cos 30, square root three over two, cos 45, one over square root two, minus sine 30 is one half, sine 45, one over square root two. So we have common denominator already, two square root two. So we can just go ahead and add square root three times one is square root three, minus one squared is minus one. Now you're gonna find that a lot of these answers have a very similar form to this. The main difference is that minus sometimes turns to a plus, uh, and other times there could be a minus out here. Uh, you're very frequently gonna find uh, answers 
really similar form to this when you're uh, figuring out cosine of uh, weird angle values. So our next one will do something really similar except that we'll go in radians this time. So we got cosine pi over 12. Well, I don't know much about twelfths. However, I'll write my known angles. So I could do zero pi over 12, oh, pi over 12, zero pi. Uh, pi over six is my next smallest angle. Ooh, very unprofessional. Pi over four, pi over three, pi over two. Now, fractions suck unless you have common denominator. Here is why I said pi over 12, because we're about to write all these as uh, some pi over 12. So this is 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12. All right. Do two of those add or subtract to make pi over 12? They sure do. I have now I have two choices. I could subtract those two or I could subtract these two. Let's go ahead and subtract these two. So we have pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Now, <clears throat> if I didn't see any of this over here and somebody just wrote that down, I would be impressed because uh, that's some pretty good fraction skills. Uh, once you see this right here, pi over three, four pi over 12 minus three pi over 12 is one pi over 12. It's not too hard to see what's going on as long as you know these values right here. So let's go ahead and use the, we got the difference formula this time. We used the sum last time. The difference formula is the one on the top right there. So we're gonna go with this one. So this has a plus in it. So this is cos pi over three. Cos pi over 4 plus sine pi over 3. Sine pi over 4. Now these are values you need to have memorized. Cos pi over 3, hopefully I do, is 1 half. Cos pi over 4, 1 over square root 2. Uh, sine pi over 3, square root 3 over 2. Sine pi over 4, 1 over square root 2. So you got 1 times 1 is a 1 plus square root three, denominator is already common. All right, so that is our uh, exact value problems. So I'm going to, let's see. We're going to do one more right now. Well, let's write simplify. Find and simplify. So we're actually gonna complicate it first, purposely complicate it and then simplify it. So what do I mean by complicate it? We're going to use that difference formula for cosine. So at the very top of the screen there, we're using that cos angle minus other angle is cos times cos plus sine times sine. So we got cos pi over two times cos theta plus All right, what uh, value is cos pi over two? Is, that value is one. Don't know about theta. The sine pi over two, oh, well that's zero. So that second term just disappears.
So that is seem right. So hopefully uh, your spidey sense went off there. Uh, I knew it, knew it wasn't right because I looked at my notes and that's not what I should be seeing down there. Um, hopefully you caught it as it happens. The problem when you write, talk, and think, and read at the same time, usually you fail uh, at multiple of those tasks. So we see zero times cosine. Cos pi over two is zero. Sine pi over two is one. So now we have zero plus sine theta, or just sine theta. Okay. Much better. Now we're gonna do the same thing for Where do we start this? All right, so let's begin with I'm going to do things in kind of a strange order here. So we're going to begin with cos theta. And the next step we're going to go pi over 2. We use the even property of cosine. And then I'm going to do something strange. So what happened with those pi over 2s? Why is this all equal? Well, I did basically added a pi over 2 and I subtracted a pi over 2. So they're going to cancel each other out and we're just having a negative theta which is what we had on the previous step. All right, now we're gonna group this up. Let's see. I don't wanna group this up and end up back where I started. So I think we're gonna group it like this. All right, I think I made the right choice. Plus, so I'm using the uh, difference formula here. Plus sine minus theta times minus theta sine pi over two. All right, cos pi over two is zero. Well, that's gonna disappear. Uh, so that first term is zero. And sine pi over two is one, so the only thing left is just that sine pi over two minus theta. And we started with, way up at the top here, cos theta. All right, and this is our other identity. I'm just gonna write it below the one that we wrote earlier. This is sine. pi over two minus theta equals cos theta. There we go. All right. So those are two more identities that we have. So this is another way to switch from sine to cosine, except the difficulty or the price you pay here is your angle changes. So it does not stay theta. Uh, so sometimes these are useful, sometimes less useful. Uh, so I'm just going to write down the uh, sine sum difference formulas. So these are mixed. These are uh, sine A plus B is sine A times cos B 
plus cosine sine b. And the sine a minus b is similar, except the sine changes. So it's minus. All right, there's the sine sum of difference formulas. So I could say find exact value of 7 pi over 12. So all you have to do is find one angle plus another angle that will give you 7 pi over 12. And this one is not really worth going into. Uh, I strongly recommend you do this on your own. Uh, but I'm going to skip it in the lecture. You got all your angles, you know, right here. And all you have to do is get 7 pi over 12. All right, so we're going to skip this problem. So we're going to do instead let's do a slightly different. I call this the backwards or the inverse problem. Well, I don't know anything about 80 degrees, nor do I know really anything about 20 degrees. I could try to get two angles to add or subtract 80 or 20, but I'll tell you from experience, uh, there are no angles on that list that will add or subtract to 80 or 20. So that's going to be out. What we're going to do instead, let's look at the form we got. It's very similar to the last, the second form right here. If you look at this, A is 80 degrees, B is 20 degrees, and then it fits that pattern exactly. So this is sine, I'm looking on the left side now, uh, 80 minus 20, which is sine 60 degrees, and that is square root of 3 over 2. And now we're going to prove an identity. The identity, of course, is going to be a sum difference. Generally, these identities are going to have two or more angles in them. Not all the time, uh, but a lot of times. So. You have to be careful. You make sure you write down A when you should write A, B when you should write B. You know, don't switch them around. So I'm double checking right now that I wrote everything down correctly. So we're going to do uh, start on the complicated side. I would say left side is more complicated. So I'm going to put the right side in a box. I'm going to do the cheat step. I know what is most likely the move I need to make here, which is write cotangent, cotangent in terms of sines and cosines. Uh, there's another big hint, hint, hint. It starts out in sines and cosines. So it's probably a very reasonable thing to do. Uh, so cotangent is cos A sine A Now I have a feeling the next step is probably common denominator. Add these two together. Well, there is no common denominator. So <clears throat> the second fraction turns into sine A, sine B over sine A, sine B. All right, if you didn't see that, uh, if that next step was not obvious, just stop right there. Don't worry about going uh, to the next line. So I definitely know the first move to make here. We're in this section called some difference formula. So, so we're going to use a difference formula for cosine. So this is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. This plus sine sine. Double check. Cos 
cos cos fun sign sign yeah and sign a sign b on the bottom all right next step <clears throat> well if i look at the cheat and look at the blue uh, i know the next step but let's not cheat and not look ahead well what can we do here from our strategies i could add fractions or in this case unadd fractions so what your algebra brain should be looking at here the form your algebra brain should see let's get this stuff out of here this is what your algebra brain should be looking at so all we're going to do is i call this unadding fractions but we're just going to take the single fraction and write it as two fractions So from here, it should be pretty clear this is one. Uh, here's another time to look ahead at the final result. Ah, it's plus one. So that should be definite confirmation right there. Now we're gonna analyze this fraction. Really we wanna group it. Let's see, I'll do an extra step that's not really needed, except it's good for uh, algebra demonstration purposes. So let me just finish writing this cosine over sine turns into cotangent A, next one cotangent B plus one, and that's our uh, result we wanted to get to. So what algebra did I do going from that line to the next line? What I did Write this in green. So how did I go from that line to that line? I had, let's see the best way to write this. A times B over C times D. These are multiplications, not additions or subtractions. You can regroup. Because how do you multiply fractions? You just multiply numerators, A times B, and then multiply denominator, C times D and you get what's on the left side there. So you can call this unmultiplying fractions. So multiplying fractions, much nicer than adding fractions. Adding fractions is not, not easy unless you get a common denominator. So we're gonna look at tangent sum and difference, and then two more examples from that. So where do these come from? Tangent and sine over cosine. We know what to do here. Uh, sine A plus B. Next is not obvious, and I'm looking at I'm cheating and looking ahead at the final form. So I'm gonna get that cos b cos a out of there. So I'm gonna multiply by a really weird fraction. Uh, the only thing reasonable about this fraction is it will equal one. Other than that, there's no reason uh, that I would multiply by it normally. So I'm gonna take the entire numerator, and there's two places to distribute it, and then take the entire denominator, and there's two places to distribute that. So again, I chose to multiply by this uh, because of what it's about to do. So let's see, we got sine A, the cos B, cos B is gonna cancel, so we have sine A over cos A, 
plus cos A cancels cos A. We have sine B over cos B. Denominator cos A cos B that cancels out to uh, divided by cos A cos B cancels out to one minus sine A sine B. No cancellation here. Now we got sine over cos that is tan A plus another sine over cos tangent of B divided by one minus tangent A times tangent B. And this came from tangent A plus B. So just below this, I'll write the other tangent, the difference. It just has a couple minus signs hanging around. Let's see, the plus turns to a minus, minus turns to a plus. Still is tan A minus tan B divided by one plus. And this just comes from the fact that tangent is an odd function. So if you change a sign on B, you bring that sign through everything that had a tangent B in it, those terms will change signs. So we looked at a, a unit circle before, but you can also prove that tangent has a period of pi using the, uh, the first, the sum formula for tangent. So you can use this and show that this is true. Uh, I'm gonna skip that, but I strongly encourage you to do that right now. Hit the pause button and take a few minutes. Uh, what I'm going to do is a slightly more tricky problem. And you'll see why it's tricky in a minute. Setting it up is just as easy as that previous example there, except you just use pi over 2 instead of pi, no problem. So I'm going to use the sum, sum formula, which is the one up top. So that's about as far in as I can zoom. Tangent, so this is tangent theta plus tangent. Uh, oh, we're putting the easy side in a box. One minus tan theta tan pi over two. All right, so all I need to do is figure out what's tangent of pi over two. Uh, if you forget, you can always go sine pi over two. All right, oh no, cos pi over two. Cos pi over two is zero. All right, so tangent pi over two is undefined. So we got some problems. We got some undefined quantities right there. Uh, now, if you look on the right side, what's on the right side? There's no pi over two anywhere. There's a theta. Uh, and if you look on the left side, well, no matter what theta is, I see theta, I see theta, you're still gonna have undefined. So no matter what theta is on the left, you're in trouble. Uh, so this is not gonna work. So we cannot just go right into this. Uh, this, by the way, doing this will solve the previous example. Just use pi. Tangent of pi has no problems at all. So unfortunately, can't use the sum formula here. So what do you do when your first try doesn't work? Give up. Or you can try again. It's usually a better strategy for the long term. So what we're going to do instead, so these are out, so forget about those. Unfortunately, that's really all I know from this section about tangent. However, how can I write tangent as other functions? Well, tangent is sine over cosine. 
So these angles are a little more complicated. Just write them out. So remember, there is no try, there is only do. So I'm just copying the angles down. Ah, sum, and another sum. So we're gonna use the sum for sine, the sum for cosine. So the sum for sine goes sine theta, sine, no, it does not. Sine theta, cos pi over two. Flip back a page of my notes to make sure I get this right. Yes, yeah, sum sine cos plus cos theta sine pi over two. By now we should be getting pretty good at getting the hang of which one is zero, which one is one. Cos pi over two is zero, so that's out. Sine pi over two is one. Divided by cosine sum formula goes cos cos sine sine cos theta cos pi over two minus sine theta sine pi over two. Same thing here. Sine pi over two is one. Cos pi over two is zero. So that's going to disappear. So we're left with cosine over negative. Now I can write everything out here. Just want to be very careful about that negative sign. So it's cos theta over negative sine theta. Now fractions and negative signs, you can write your negative sign where it is. You could uh, bring it out front. Uh, or if you really want to, you can let it hang out up by the cosine. As long as there's only one negative sign, they all mean the same thing. All right, either way, I don't want cos over sine, this is cotangent. There we go, that's what I wanted to get to, negative cotangent theta. All right, congratulations, you made it through some difference formulas. Next up, double half angles.